we're going to go ahead and take a look at our game of the year votes. We're going to go ahead and get fucking started. I'm going to move the camera so it goes up in this top left corner. And we're going to go ahead and start with the game of the year. There's Alan Wake 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Marvel's Spider-Man 2, Resident Evil 4, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Going, going to try and be unbiased. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. And then I hope everyone does the same. Like, unbiased, like, they just vote for what they believe it truly deserves it. Um, Alan Wake 2, I know, has been absolutely revered in, like, the gaming industry for, like, since it came out, like, just recently. Um, Resident Evil 4, I just, for me, Resident Evil 4 just didn't make that big of a splash, um, in terms of, like, looking forward to it. Super Mario Bros. Wonder just came out, so I don't, I'm pretty sure it just came out, right? Like, you're gonna, like, it's been less than a month. And it's up for a game of the year. I I just don't see how that fits. In comparison to some of the titles that have at least been up here. Like, uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, that game came out May 12th. I think that is a valid, like, game of the year admission. Again, a game has been out for the month, from less than a month. People are going to be riding the train of, it just came out, like, new game hype. So, I don't know. Resident, when did Resident Evil 4 come out? March 23rd, 100% valid. Get Spider-Man. Yeah, it came out October 20th. It came out, really? It came out the same day that Super Mario Bros. Wonder came out? I've watched a gameplay of actually every single one of these games. I've watched some Alan Wake. I've watched, I've actually watched and played Baldur's Gate. I've watched Spider-Man. I've watched Resident Evil. I've watched the Super Mario Bros. Wonder. And I've watched Tears of the Kingdom. I've watched them all. And I'm going to be honest, not being biased, it's the only one I've played my vote goes to Baldur's Gate 3. Think about it. It's like, it's a D&D &D game that people are like, oh, I don't know if it's going to do well. I don't know if whatever. Blah, 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 blah. I wasn't going to buy this game because of how long, how many hours it takes, how long it's going to be. But my friend Jake bought me the game and it came out on August 3rd. I mean, it's doing stuff that no other fucking company was expecting no people like it has raised the stakes in the DD community that baldur's gate 3 is just wow i mean with a net with 357,000 reviews on steam and a 96 percent turnover rate like it's a good fucking title best game direction alan wake 2 baldur's gate 3 marvel's spider-man 2 super mario bros wonder and legend of zelda tears of the kingdom awarded for outstanding creative vision and innovation in game direction and design i'm gonna also give this one to baldur's gate 3 i think outstanding don't worry about Spy marvel spider-man 2 looks so good but it looks like they've added to the formula of, Sp of marvel's spider-man 1 rather than and miles morales rather than doing something new super mario bros wonder it adds again to the 2d style that's where i see it from tears of the kingdom adds on to it adds on to Breath of the Wild's open world style, and I really enjoyed watching it. Alan Wake 2, I haven't seen enough of for it to get my vote. Although, now that I have seen it, I am very interested in Alan Wake 2, so I'm going to definitely, like I said, I'm going to play it. But for me, get yeah, Baldur's Gate 3. I had never actually been super interested in D&D. Like, I liked the concept of D&D, and I'd like the idea of how it works as a game. But Baldur's Gate 3 has actually got me to really, really enjoy D, D as well as i don't think there's another D, D game out there that does it even rem remotely in the same plane of, ex of existence as baldur's gate 3 at least as far as i know so for me i'm gonna give it baldur's gate 3 uh let's see what the next one is next one is best narrative for outstanding storytelling and narrative development in a game despite what i just said i haven't played enough baldur's gate 3 to actually give it a vote being somebody who actually hasn't delved really deep in any of these games i'm gonna give my vote to marvel's spider-man 2 um I think the way that from what I've seen is they went Marvel Spider-Man 1, Miles Morales, and then linked them all together as well as included some of the other enemies and lore of just Spider-Man as a whole. I thought it was really good. So I'm going to give it to Marvel Spider-Man 2. Best Art Direction for Outstanding Creative and or Technical Achievement in Artistic Design and Animation. Let's see, Alan Wake 2, Hi-Fi Rush, Lies of P, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. For outstanding creative and or technical achievement in artistic design and animation. I've never even heard of Hi-Fi Rush, so I can't give it that one. Ironically enough, it's a Bethesda game, but 
I've never heard of it, which is means I need to go check this game out if it's getting nominations. Lies of P is a Souls-like game based off of the story of Pinocchio. Um, Super Mario Bros. Wonder and Legend of Zelda, we all know those. I'm outstanding creative and or technical achievement in artistic design and animation. I'm going to give my vote to... See, I don't like the art style of Legend of Zelda as much. Uh, I'm going to probably I'm gonna give it to Super Mario Bros. Wonder, I think. Lies of P, very cool looking game. I want to play it. Um, but I mean, every it looks like a, another version of like Bloodborne 2.0, um, which is something... And I think it in today's I I just I don't I give it to I give it to Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Somehow this franchise keeps managing to innovate and create new things for itself. So Best score and music for outstanding music, inclusive of score, original song, and or licensed soundtrack. I am going to give it to Final Fantasy right off the rip. Uh I haven't I don't recognize any of the music out of any of the other games. Um but from what I've heard from people talking about these titles, like my friend Jake says, Baldur's Gate 3 music, it's all right. I haven't really heard anything about Alan Wake 2's music. Um, Hi-Fi Rush, again, didn't even know it existed. Uh, Legend of Zelda, I, I don't know about anything about its music. But I've heard a lot of people talk about the Final Fantasy soundtrack from who presumably is Masayoshi. I've heard very, very good things about the music in this game. So... Best audio design. Recognizing the best in-game audio and sound design. What the fuck is Hi-Fi Rush? I gotta... Um, Dead Space. Don't really remember anything about the audio in Dead Space. Alan Wake 2. Me. So this is really up to Marvel Spider-Man 2. I'll just give it to Marvel Spider-Man 2, honestly. Just because Spider-Man and frankly... You know what? Because I think this is the only nomination Dead Space gets, I'll give it to Dead Space. Best performance. Awarded to an individual for voice over acting, motion, and or performance capture. So we've got Ben Starr from Final Fantasy, Cameron Monaghan from Jedi War, uh, Jedi, uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, Idris Elba from Cyberpunk, Melaine Liburd from Alan Wake 2, Neil Newborn from Baldur's Gate 3, and Yuri Lowenthal from Marvel's Spider-Man 2. Here's Cyberpunk for me. I haven't played, I haven't really seen, I know Idris Elba, I think Idris Elba in the game is so cool, but I've actually sat with my friends for like three or four hours and that while they played Star Wars Je uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor and Cameron Monaghan did a fucking phenomenal job. Truly. I'm going to give my vote to Cameron Monaghan. Innovation in accessibility. Recognizing s software and or hardware that is pushing the medium forward by adding features, technology, and content to help games be played and enjoyed by an even wider audience. As far as I know, the only game that did anything super innovative in this category is Street Fighter 6. I don't think Mortal Kombat did anything crazy. I'd like to see Mortal Kombat win, but if I'm being honest with myself, I think Street Fighter 6 is like the only one in this category that truly like did something good. So I'm gonna I'm gonna vote Street Fighter 6. Plus I've seen gameplay. I watched somebody who doesn't play fighting games ever pick up Street Fighter 6 and instantly hit platinum because of the accessibility in the game. Games for impact. For a thought-provoking game with a pro-social meaning or message. A Space for the Unbound, Chance of Senar, Goodbye Volcano High, Chia, Terra Nil, and Venba. I haven't heard of this in one of these games. I'm going to give it to Terra Nil because they look, it looks like a very calming, cool game about nature. And I'm all for keeping nature alive. Next one is Best Ongoing. Awarded to a game for the best outstanding development of ongoing content that evolves the player experience over time. It is not Apex Legends. <laughs> it does not win here. Cyberpunk. I will give them credit. They, the revival of that game is second to none. Very few games were able to pull off what CD Projekt Red pulled off. Fortnite and Genshin fell off hard. I don't think Genshin Impact has fallen off as hard as people think. I think streaming Genshin Impact has fallen off hard. They're a game, a game can be like not content friendly, but be very fun. Like that's why I think Armor Core is, Armor Core doesn't seem to have a super big community in terms of content creation, but the people who play the game are like very passionate about it. Is what I from what I've seen. I think Fortnite is still up there. I don't feel any joy in playing Genshin Impact anymore. And I dropped Fortnite years ago in Chapter Two, Season Two. I played a Fortnite recently. It's I have no desire to keep playing it. It's cool. I got my one and done. Armor Core Six is awesome. It is. I think it got a nomination in like Best Action Games or something. I'm pretty sure. I made a big deal about it in Discord. I'll be voting for that.
100%. So really for me, the only two votes here are going to be Cyberpunk and Final Fantasy. And I mean, I've put seven hours into Cyberpunk versus 300 into Final Fantasy. My votes can go for Final Fantasy. The community of that game is phenomenal. And frankly, the DLCs they put out are just insane. I will, I will probably not be going back to play more of the Final Fantasy MMO, but holy shit am I impressed with what they do every single DLC. Final Fantasy is very good from what I've heard. Oh yeah, the MMO is, if you're looking for an MMO to play, you play Final Fantasy. Don't play WoW, don't play Elder Scrolls Online, despite I fucking love the Elder Scrolls universe, but that game just, I played it for like, I think 50 or 100 hours. I just, I will not go back. Final Fantasy kept me in loop for 300 hours. And again, I just have other games I'm interested in. I don't have enough time, unfortunately, to put towards playing Final Fantasy. So I just put it down, unfortunately. But I will still go on and say, Phenomenal game. Best community support. Recognizing a game for outstanding community support, transparency, and responsiveness, inclusive of social media activity and game updates and patches. Baldur's Gate, Cyberpunk, Destiny 2? How does that fucking make it in here? What? Final Fantasy 14 and No Man's Sky. Okay, let's get something off the bat right fucking now for those of you who don't know. I have a thousand, I have almost 1100 hours in Destiny 2. That does not even deserve a fucking spot on this list. Oh my god, I put 11, I tried. You think I tried with Genshin Impact? No, I fucking tried with Destiny 2. Couldn't do it. I just don't have the urge and the want to play it anymore. Do I wish I got my time back for Destiny 2? I wish I'd put the game down like 400 hours previous, maybe even 500. Destiny 2 does not. You want to talk about fun game if you have a community and friends to play with every day but if you don't and you're and you're solo grinding regularly props to you if you're still playing the game i think i gotta keep giving i think i gotta give this one to final fantasy i don't know about what um transparency they've given for Baldur's gate 3 and again cyberpunk revival upon revival fucking phenomenal job truly but this isn't about ro this isn't about turnaround of game. This is about the community support, transparency, and responsiveness, and inclusive of social media activity and game updates and patches. Oh, game updates and patches. Yeah, mm, can I put the revival of a whole game against against what have they done this year? Actually, I should correction. What have they done this year? What has Final Fantasy done this year? I, as far as I remember. Okay. Okay. I will give Cyberpunk my vote this year. Just what they did for this game. It came out in the probably one of the in the worst state it possibly could have come out in, and playing it, playing it today, and what today's day and age I should say, wow, 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 truly just a fucking spectacular game. Let's see. Next is best independent game for outstanding creative and technical achievement in a game made outside the traditional publisher system. Cocoon, Dave the Diver, Dredge, Sea of Stars, and Viewfinder. Isn't Viewfinder the one where you look at the screen and then it creates the map? Look, he took a picture. He put the picture down and he was able to stand on. You cannot tell me that it's that game is not. It's been since someone's wandered around this place. And wanderers. Look, and then look, he makes the picture and he can walk to it. Isn't that sick? He took this picture. He puts it up. He gets rid of the frame so we can walk through. Viewfinder. Oh my god, what a game this looks like it'll be. It is, or whatever. Is this on my Steam wishlist? If it's not, I'm gonna add it. I, I wanna play this. Look at that! They were to ever oh, don't back. bully Dustin. Oh, they bullied him. I must admit, I'm surprised you made it this far. It's quite exciting. I'm changing my vote for this. Everybody should vote this game. No, I refuse to fucking believe. And you can pet the cat. So yeah, I'm changing my vote to this. Viewfinder. Viewfinder gets my vote. No other game has ever even tried to do what this does on top of the budget, what the budget it has. And for the low price of $25, Viewfinder. And best debut indie game. A lot of people are saying Pizza Tower should get this. Cocoon, Dredge, Pizza Tower, Venba, Viewfinder. A lot of people are saying 
Pizza Tower should get this vote. I watched some gameplay of, of Pizza Tower. I watched probably four or five, maybe six hours of it. It was cool. It was really good. But again, Viewfinder. If Viewfinder gets my vote, I already voted for it. My man, there we go. Yeah, I mean, if you're not voting Viewfinder in this category, you better be put voting Pizza Tower or you are trolling. Best mobile game for the best game playable on a mobile device. Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis, Hello Kitty Island Adventure, Honkai Star Rail, Monster Hunter Now, and Terra Nil. Final Fantasy? Final Fa I've never heard anything about Ever Cry Final Fantasy Ever Crisis. I know it's a Final Fantasy game. Um, Hello Kitty Island Adventure, I've, I'm not gonna lie, I've seen, <laughs> I've, I've heard some memes going on about this. Uh, it's cool. Um, Honkai Star Rail, I think Honkai just looks like a better Genshin Impact. Um, to at least start off with. It's like they took what they knew worked about Genshin and innovated on it and made Honkai Star Rail. Monster Hunter Now, never heard a single thing about it. Terra Nil, I know I voted for it earlier, but if we're going for best mobile game, I can't vote for it here. I think I give it to Honkai. It's the only one I actually know anything about. Um, I don't... Yeah, I mean, Hello Kitty Island Adventure and Final Fantasy could be cool. But, I mean, I, yeah, I give it to... It's the only thing I know anything about. I just give it to Honkai Star Rail. Fuck it best vr or ar for the best game experience playable in virtual or augmented reality irrespective of platform gran turismo 7 horizon call of the mountain humanity resident evil village vr mode and snap i'm gonna give my vote based on my previous experience with these franchises like i've never i never even heard of snaps or humanity never heard of them so i can't give them my vote um, so that leaves me with Gran Turismo 7, Horizon Call of the Mountain, and the Resident Evil Village VR mode. I'm a pussy when it comes to VR games, so I will never play v Resident Evil Village VR, but I will play the game, and I don't know how well it would do. It probably be, it might be a good experience. Um, that leaves me with Horizon Call of the Mountain and Gran Turismo 7, and from what it looks like, yeah, it's Resident Evil, or not Resident Evil, sorry, it's Horizon with like the one with the actual machines, like it's like the actual Horizon franchise. I played Gran Turismo before. I get bored of those games quickly. Um, I think racing games are really cool for like here and there. So my vote goes to Horizon Call of the Mountain. I think Forbidden West and Zero Dawn are for no are like okay. I've played a lot of Zero Dawn, and I want to finish it. I need to go back and play it. And Forbidden West looks phenomenal. And I think I feel like the franchise only still goes up from there. Having a game like that. And VR is going to be great. Best action game. Armored Core 6, Fires of Rubicon, Dead Island 2, Ghost Runner 2, Hi-Fi Rush, and Remnant 2. Okay, Re Hi-Fi Rush didn't know it existed. Remnant 2, I want to play. I want to play Remnant 1 before I play Remnant 2, but I heard Remnant 2 was a fucking phenomenal game. Ghost Runner 2 looks great. Like, go I, have, I own Ghost Runner 1. I want to play that. Ghost Runner 2 looks like what they did even better. Dead Island 2 was a lot of fun for me. I've put 20 hours into the game. 10, 10 15, 20 hours in the game. I'm kind of done. I'm still hooked on Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon. And for those of you who don't know what I'm doing with the game at the moment, like I'm personally, I'm playing this game. We're going to be playing it later today as well. It's 37 hours. I'm still, I plan to 100% the game. Like I've been the, all I have is literally the final mission of new game plus two. And then I'm going to go back and like just play farm up on these achievements and i'm gonna 100 percent the game so for me armor core 6 fires of rubicon while dead island 2 and ghost runner 2 look phenomenal and i've heard remnant 2 is good armored core 6 fires of rubicon best action adventure for the best action adventure game combining combat with transversal and puzzle solving alan wake 2 marvel spider-man 2 resident evil 4 star wars jedi survivor and the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom the only the one I've seen the most of is Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Um, I've seen next to, like I said, I've seen little bits and pieces of Tears of the Kingdom. I've seen bits and pieces of Alan Wake Two, Resident Evil Four. Seen bits and pieces, so that really only leaves my vote up to Marvel's Spider Man Two and Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Um, and I think I give it to Star Wars. Also, I don't know if you guys heard, but they closed the door upstairs to, to me because I guess I'm being too loud on Saturday at 2.30 in the afternoon. Best RPG. 
For the best game designed with rich player character customization and progression, including massive multiplayer experiences, Baldur's Gate 3, Final Fantasy 14, Lies of P, Sea of Stars, and Starfield? Anyways, best RPG, I'm going to give it to Baldur's Gate 3. I haven't played any of the others, and Baldur's Gate 3 is just so good. I mean, yeah, best RPG. I think it wins this vote pretty handedly, for me, at least for me. Best fighting game. For the best game designed primarily around head-to-head -head combat, God of Rock, Mortal Kombat 1, Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2, Pocket Bravery, and Street Fighter 6. I haven't even heard of God of Rock or Pocket Bravery, so I cannot give those my vote. Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2, I've heard is very good, but again, I haven't played it. Yeah, it's Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter. Yeah, I'm going to give my vote to Mortal Kombat 1. Um, basically, I just prefer Mortal Kombat. I prefer that over Street Fighter. Um, Street Fighter, again, phenomenal game. I've watched a lot of it, and I really enjoy watching it. But for me, playing and watching, I'm going to give my vote to Mortal Kombat 1. Best family game. For the best game appropriate for family play, introspective of genre or platform, Disney Illusion Island, Party Animals, Pikmin 4, Sonic Superstars, Super Mario Bros. Wonder. I didn't even know that that Disney Illusion game was even a thing. Party Animals I've heard is very fun, but I think it'll lose its fun quickly for me. Uh, I've never even looked into a Pikmin game, so... So that leaves Sonic Superstars and Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Didn't even know Super Sonic Superstars was a thing, so for me, Super Mario Bros. Wonder gets my vote. Best Sim and Strategy. Best game focused on real-time or turn-based simulation or strategy gameplay, irrespective of platform. Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp, City Skylines 2, Company of Heroes 3, Fire Emblem Engage, and Pikmin 4. I didn't even know Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 and Company of Heroes 3 was a thing, so I'm going to say those don't get my vote. City Skylines, Fire Emblem Engage, and Pikmin 4. I'm going to give my vote to Fire Emblem Engage. There's one person that I actually follow on Twitter who fucking loves these types of games, and he talks about Fire Emblem Engage quite a bit, so I'm going to give it my choice. City Skylines is good, but the girl on the cover of Fire Emblem Engage looks nice, still staying strong. Best sports slash racing game. For the best traditional and non-traditional sports and racing game, EA Sports F FC24, F123, Forza Motorsport, Hot Wheels Unleashed 2, Turbocharged, and The Crew Motorfest. EA Sports FC24. I've seen gameplay of it. I love the sport. I mean, a bit biased, but it is what it is. Um, best multiplayer for outstanding online multiplayer gameplay and design, including co-op and massive multiplayer experiences, irrespective of gameplay, genre, or platform. Baldur's Gate 3, Diablo 4, Party Animals, Street Fighter 6, and Super Mario Bros. Wonder. And this one is sponsored by Discord! I'm going to give it to the only game I've actually played in this category and that I've actually had experience with the multiplayer, and that's... I'm going to give my vote to Baldur's Gate 3. Best Adaptation. Recognizing outstanding creative work that faithfully and authentically adapts a video game to another entertainment medium. Didn't know there was another Castlevania show coming out. Gran Turismo movie. Honestly forgot about it. Super Mario Bros. movie and Last of Us are really the only two real ones for me. I didn't even know there was a Twisted Metal show. Gran Turismo movie was amazing, saw it with a mate, and I loved it. I'm going to give mine to The Last of Us. The Last of Us, to this day, still has people fucking screaming at the top of their lungs and how good it is. I'm going to give it to The Last of Us. I don't know about The Last of Us show. I've heard literally, like, nothing but good things about it. Most anticipated game. Recognizing an announced game that has demonstrably illustrated potential to push the gaming medium forward. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Hades 2, Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, Star Wars Outlaws, Tekken 8. Um, not really into fighting games, so Tekken 8 kind of falls there. Not really the biggest fan. I like Final Fantasy, but I'm not the biggest fan, so Final Fantasy VII and does not get my vote. Like a Dragon, I didn't even realize what game that was till I saw someone streaming it and it looks cool. Um, not... So that leaves Star Wars and Hades... I haven't played Hades 1, but one of my friends has all the achievements for it, whereas I haven't heard anyone talk about Star Wars Outlaws. So despite me being a bigger fan of Star Wars than Hades, I'm going to give my vote to Hades. Because th this game has basically become a ghost. I chose Tekken 8, if I remember correctly. I gotcha. Hades 2. I'm surprised, um, 
Hollow Knight. I'm surprised a new Hollow Knight is not on there. Content Creator of the Year. For a streamer, Content Creator who has made an important and positive impact on the community. Iron Mouse, People Make Games, Quackity, Spreen, and Cypher. The only one I watch here is actually I don't watch any of them. The only two ones I actually know about. I only know about Quackity because of last year's uh, voting. Do you aware? That's what I'm saying. Like, where's me? Sure, I'll give it to People Make Games. Fuck it. If that's what you voted, I'll vote for it as well. Why not? Best esports game. For the game that has delivered the best overall esports experience to players, inclu inclusive of tournaments, community support, and content updates, irrespective of their genre and platform. CS2, Dota 2, League of Legends, PUBG, Valorant. Um, I think League of Legends. I think there are so many parts to League of Legends um, that move and the things you have to worry about and the timings you have to get right. Like, I give my vote to League of Legends. I play Valorant all the time. Nah, League of Legends. Best esports athlete. The esports athlete judged to be the most outstanding performance and conduct in 2023, irrespective of game. Faker, Zywu, Demon One, Hydra, Ruler, and Imperial Hal. Okay, not Ruler. And I don't think you can give this vote to Fake. I actually don't think you can give this vote. If Faker wins tonight, I think Faker. If Faker wins 2023 Worlds in League, um, I think you could. I think you give it to Faker. Uh, Zywu, I'm not super into CS, so I can't actually say Zywu. So that leaves Imperial Hal, Demon One, Hydra. Um, I'm going to give it to Hydra on the one basis of he did coming into the league, I think a year or two ago, maybe not even that. He did not know any English. He's a French player and he knew zero English. And he's gone on to play at this level and communicate with his team. And it's, there will, I, for there to be another player like Hydra in the Call of Duty scene, it's just going to be, I'm going to. I'm voting Hydra here. Thank you, Hydra. But like everyone, literally, you could choose, to me, you could choose Demon 1, Faker, or Imperial Hal, or Hydra. Four of the six votes, and for me, the way I understand esports, valid. Best esports team. Recognizing a specific esports team, not the full organization, judged the most outstanding for performance and conduct in 2023. Evil Geniuses on Val for Valorant. Fnatic for Valorant. Gaiman Gladiators for Dota 2, JD Gaming for JDG for League of Legends, and Team Vitality in CS to JDG. The only team that other team that comes close in my opinion, other than maybe Fnatic, is Evil Geniuses. Best esports coach. The esports coach judged to be the most outstanding performance and conduct of 2023. Potter for Evil Geniuses Valorant, Zonic for Team Falcon CS, Gunba for Florida Mayhem Overwatch. I don't know how to say that name, but Team Vitality Counter Strike. And home for JDG League of Legends. Yes, Potter turned that team around for Evil Geniuses. But when your worst finish out of the whole year is third place. And League of Legends being a harder game. You gotta give credit to that. What to do? Potter should win though. Potter, I, I, Potter or home could win. Best esports event. Recognizing an event across a single or multiple days that delivered a best of class experience for participants and broadcast audience. The 2023 League of Legends World Championship, the Blast.TV Paris Major 2023, Evo 2023, the International Dota 2 Championships 2023, and the Valorant Champions 2023. I chose Blast TV. They're all good. I've watched a part of I've watched some or a lot, if not most, of all of these. They're all good. All fucking phenomenal. But hmm. The Valorant broadcast had some issues. I know that. my I had a lot, a couple moments here and there. People were just saying spamming F in chat because the stream broke. I'll give my vote to the League of Legends World, World Tournament. I really... Something about League of Legends. It's just... Wow. YouTube the best. Go to the